Buenos dias everyone and welcome to what I hate to say is our last day here in Madrid. We have had so much fun in the city and in this country, getting to know the culture, being here for a longer period of time. But one thing we have not done yet in Madrid is a food tour. We gotta show you all the delicious food here in Madrid. I can't wait. So the famous Chocolateria Sanguinis is where we're gonna have some chocolate con churros for breakfast. Nothing better than breakfast chocolate. So there is a line for tables, but we found out you can go ahead and order ahead of time inside and then just pop in line for a seat. Hopefully, seats outside, but we'll see. Gracias. A churro is a long stick of dough. It's usually made with flour, salt, and water. And it's deep fried in oil, and they stir it with a stick to make sure that it keeps this long consistency, and it's always kind of in the shape. So sometimes it's sprinkled with a little sugar. These seem to be served plain. And the reason why they don't always need sugar, I mean, if you get a churro at the fair in the US, you're gonna have sugar on it, but it's always served with this coffee mug of chocolate. And it's not just any chocolate. It is the perfectly bitter, sweet combination of chocolate. It's not too sweet. If this was like a really sweet chocolate, this would be way too much. It would make your stomach sick right away. This is like a very good combination of bitter and sweet. So you can eat a few of these. This is the oldest chocolateria in Madrid. And Madrid is a pretty old city. So if you think about the oldest of anything in Madrid, that's pretty impressive. This was opened in 1894. It's famous for being open 24 hours. Now, unfortunately with the crazy last two years we've had, they're no longer doing that at this time. But for a long time, this place, seven days a week, 24 hours was open. Now I can't really get with most of the Spanish customs here. You know, like staying up late, eating late. But this, this I can get used to. Nothing like a big bowl of chocolate in the morning. So San Gaines totally would recommend that is one tourist place that you have to stop at when you're here in Madrid. I just love churros and dipping it in that chocolate. But one thing I will say is I'm the kind of person that hates leaving like a lot of dip behind or you know like if there's a condiment of some sort. No dip left behind. So when you leave the churro place you're lucky to get through half of that chocolate mug. And I always just kind of wonder, like, why do they give you so much chocolate? I'm just so curious, do people drink that? Because I was tempted. <laughs> drink that? It's pure liquid chocolate. I know. It's like... Please, if you're Spanish, what do you do with the leftover chocolate? Let us know I in the I think you just leave it, but yeah, let us know. So up next is a food hall that cannot be missed while you're here in Madrid. So after enjoying churros over the chocolate area, it's just a very short walk over to the Mercado de San Miguel. This awesome market hall that's right by the Plaza Mayor. Pretty much everything you could possibly imagine in here. We've got churros if you want to double up. There's croquetas, there's jamón. There's other kinds of foods from other Spanish-speaking countries such as arepas or empanadas. So we're going to see what we can find at the market today. So we've been in the market a few times now and it has been packed every single time we've been here. Right now it's a Monday morning afternoon. Everyone's here. So like a typical market, you're just gonna see all of the different options. You're gonna have all the smells coming at you. It's gonna be very hard to decide what option you're gonna take. The one thing is you have to be very aggressive because there's just not a lot of room here. So if you wanna get somewhere, you gotta throw some elbows. You just gotta... Mm. So we're gonna make a stop here at the Arzabal Croqueteria. These are croquettes or croquetas in Spanish. You're gonna see them on every single tapas menu. It's a very, very popular tapas option. They have them here for about a euro 80 per croquette. Can I get five jamón? It is absolutely madness in there. So we had to step outside to do our little taste test. These are like very elongated shaped croquetas. Now this is like our 30th day in Spain. We know what a good croquetta tastes like. So let's see how these compare. Mmm. It has a nice creamy inside texture. 
cheese, the hamon, the potato, and then the outside, it's fried to perfection, and you've got these little crunchy bits on the outside. Very, very well done. If you're torn between which flavor to get in there, definitely go for the hamon. They're the best. So it was pretty intense in there. There's just always so many people. I don't understand it every single day of the week. It's a very daunting task to go in there, but I'm going back in because when we were leaving, we passed a jamón stop. This is one of the most prized exports of Spain. You'll see it on a menu as jamón ibérico, and that's because the pigs that jamón comes from have to be from the Iberian region. It's Iberian ham, but basically this isn't just any kind of ham. This is an entire pig's leg that is cured and then they just shave it right off. So you have like the leg bone essentially and you'll see these guys with a very specific type of tool. They'll just take it right off the bone. It has to obviously be cured in a very specific type of way. That pig had to come from the Iberian region or at least had to have 50% Iberian ancestry. On top of that, the pigs have to be acorn fed. So it's not just any type of pig that Hamon comes from. It's a very specific type, and that's why it's always so consistent in the taste. Now, because there's all of these requirements, and of course, because it's so dang delicious, Hamon's a little more on the pricey side. So just something to keep in mind. It's probably not something you can order every time at a tapas place. If you get a plate of just Hamon, it's usually gonna be between 20 and 25 euros. Let's see how much this costs, because this guy, he looks like he's the Hamon expert. That is a battle and a half. It's obviously worth mentioning how crowded it gets in there, but I don't want to scare you from going in because it's definitely an experience and there's so many tasty things. Definitely worth the visit. Let's try the hamon, shall we? So this is about as fresh as it gets. We literally saw the guy shaving off a new leg because they were running out of cones. Mm. It's just packed with flavor. It reminds me a lot of prosciutto, but at the same time, it's a very different flavor than prosciutto. A must have in Spain. This glorious cone of jamón ibérico ended up costing us 17 euros. That actually wasn't as bad as I was thinking. They charge by the pound in there, so it just kind of depends on how much they actually put in the cone. I guarantee those cones go very fast. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the restaurant Botin, spelled B-O-T-I-N, here in the central part of Madrid, is the oldest still operating restaurant in the entire world. Opened in 1725, it's famous for its roasted suckling pig and its roasted lamb. If you do come here, that's what you have to get. Can't wait to try it someday when maybe I have a little more money in my pocket, but it is probably a little more on the pricey side. But if you are treating yourself to a really, really nice night out here in Madrid, this is a great spot for dinner. Tell me how the pig is if someone tries it or if someone has had it before. Also, Ernest Hemingway was a big fan of this restaurant and a big fan of Spain in general. He spent a lot of time in Madrid and actually in his book, Death in the Afternoon, he mentions Botin and the suckling pig, which is said to be some of the best in the world. Luckily for us, there's another famous establishment right across the street from Botin called Bodegas Ricla. Of course, we had to stop, have a couple tintos. Salud. Salud. So if you've ever heard someone talk about drinks you have to have in Spain, I'm sure you've heard of sangria, but actually there are a lot of other things, including vermouth and Tinto de Verano. So this is the Tinto de Verano, which essentially just translates to red wine of the summer. This is a mixture of red wine and lemonade and usually has either a lemon or an orange wedge as a garnish. These are the perfect, most refreshing drinks. And I know sangria is great, but I think this is just a little bit more refreshing. Now, if you do stop at Bodegas Riclo, just be aware they do not accept credit cards and it's actually kind of a sticking point for them. Since 1867, they've been open and they have never accepted a credit card purchase. So bring your cash. So this is a telling sign of a very old establishment. All we ordered were two tintos and we were served a little tapa along with it for free.
People here in Spain do everything just a little bit later, and there's a reason for that. It gets really hot here, especially in the summer. Way back in the day when the farmers were working, they actually couldn't work at a certain period of time. It was just too dangerous to be out in that hot sun. That's when the siesta was born. Most people know what the siesta is, the mid-afternoon nap. That kind of changes the way that people do things. You're usually not gonna have dinner here before like 9 p.m., maybe 8.30. We're just approaching 20 minutes till 4 p.m., and it's starting to get really hot. This is probably the hottest part of the day, and this is when people usually kind of settle down a little bit, maybe take a siesta, and definitely hydrate. It's really, really important to hydrate here in Spain. Since it's about 90 degrees out, uh, we're gonna go inside and just beat the heat a little bit. We'll be back in a couple hours to prepare for our late dinner. So after our brief pause in the day, it is about 6.30 p.m., which actually, believe it or not, is way too early for dinner. We still got a good two and a half hours before it's dinner time because it's Spain. But we're just gonna go see if we can find some, maybe a beer, maybe a cerveza. This lovely establishment is called 100 Montaditos. They actually have a lot of them all over Madrid, all over Spain. It's a, it's a pretty big chain. And the reason we love it is because not only do they have really, really good beer and really cold beer on tap. This is a Euro 50 for this mug right here. I mean, you absolutely can't beat that price, not just in Spain, but really anywhere in Europe, unless you're in Romania or Bulgaria, you're not gonna find a price like that. Mm. It makes it taste even better. And on top of that, they have potato chips, they have olives, nice salty snacks to keep the drinking going. And this only costs a Euro. During our time in 100 Montaditas, we learned a lot about what Montaditas actually are. They do indeed have 100 different types of Montaditas, the little sandwiches, and basically montar means to put on top of something. If you picture the bread, they put, whether it's chorizo or cheese or whatever's gonna go in the sandwich, that goes on top of the bread, and then it's toasted. When it says 100 Montaditas, that's pretty good advertising because if you wanted to have 100 different ones, you could do that here. Welcome into the next stop here on our food tour, Service Area San Andreas here in the La Latina neighborhood. We've already got our Tinto de Veranos and complimentary olives. We're going to show you three more tapas that you absolutely have to try. We've already showed you the croquetas and the jamón. We're now going to have the fried padrón peppers, the huevos rotos, and patatas bravas. Please excuse us, we already dug in, but these are the patatas bravas. Essentially just roasted potatoes with a spicy red sauce. Patatas bravas literally means brave potatoes. More directly translates to spicy potatoes. It's a nice spicy red sauce. Very, very common tapa. And then you have the peppers, which are almost gone because everyone just right away took the peppers. These are padrón peppers. And you can see the way that they're prepared. It's like a very specific type of frying where it kind of just blisters up. And they're so good, you just eat them right off the stem. They have rock salt on them, very big pieces of salt. Every once in a while you get a really spicy one, but mostly they're mild. And here we have my absolute favorite thing on any tapas menu. This is the huevos rotos, and it's very, very simple. You just have fries, you have eggs, and you have jamón. It's a good way to get jamón and not too pricey. This one cost us 14 euros, so if you think about the amount of jamón you get, plus the fries, plus the eggs. It's just a perfect hangover food. To conclude our food tour here through Madrid, we're gonna have one more round of tapas, and of course, some more Tinto de Verano. My really good friend Antonio is with us, one of my greatest friends in the world, and he's showing, showing us a proper tapas experience, because I guess we were saying it wrong. Tapas are not the small dishes, that's actually what you get for free. So before when we were at the bar, when we got a little chorizo for free, that's a tapa. It's not when you get like the small plates. The small plates is... Ración. 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 See, I've been doing it wrong my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still called a tapas bar. Yep. When you're making a plan of going to a restaurant or a bar mm -hmm. that sells tapas or raciones, mm -hmm. you say, ir de tapas, ir go de tapas. for tapas. Go for tapas, okay. See, okay, that's what we usually say too, so at least we are a little bit right. But. <laughs> That is gonna complete our food tour here in Madrid. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a lot of food over a, lot, a long period of time, but 
very very enjoyable if we missed anything if you're from madrid if you're spanish and you're watching let us know drop it in the comment section as always if you don't mind liking and subscribing really really helps us out and wish sydney a happy birthday everybody happy birthday dear sydney happy birthday Yeah.